All right, guys, so we've got a 2006 Nissan Murano that we're about to put an alternator in. Um, I troubleshot this alternator uh, a couple days ago, ordered the alternator, and uh, now we're about to put it in. And I'm going to do this from the top. I've seen some people do it from the bottom. If you do it from the bottom, you have to take the compressor loose. Now, and I've done that before, and you, that, that is an option. The problem with that is it's, it's actually more work dealing with the compressor and you run the risk of this car's got over 200,000 miles you run the risk of tweaking the lines and now you cause a leak in your uh, AC system so if you've got an intact AC system I wouldn't risk because taking the fans out and the radiator is actually really easy on this car um, the only bad thing about it is you do have to drain the radiator uh, but if your coolant's in good shape, you just pour it back in so you don't even have to buy new coolant. But if you've got a lot of miles and you've never had the radiator the coolant serviced, this would probably be the perfect opportunity to go ahead and uh, put fresh coolant back in the system anyway. So basically what I'm going to do, first step I'm going to, well let me back up. I've got the vehicle jacked up. I've got a jack stand just under this side. The jack's not actually supporting anything right now. In fact, I can get rid of it. So got the tire still installed on that side, but I've got this tire, the jack stand removed. I've got the plastic fairing removed here. It was just a bunch of these little plastic clips and all this stuff uh, on the front came off. You can see that in the other video. Now, you're going to have a plastic shroud right here that you're going to want to take off. It was already uh, missing on this car, um, but that's going to need to come off because we got to get to a bolt, and it's going to make it a lot easier to get this belt off um, to be able to access the bottom part down here. The tensioner right here, we've got to get to that. We're going to we're going to loosen that bolt, and then uh, detension the belt, pull the belt off. I'm going to disconnect this radiator hose, get it out of the way pull these fans out. I'm going to try to do this without pulling the radiator. I'm not sure. It looks like it's going to be really close, but you don't want to risk puncturing the radiator because the radiator comes out way too easy. So if it won't fit just with having the fans removed, I am going to remove the radiator, but I'm going to try not to remove the radiator. But the very first thing I'm going to do is disconnect the negative side of the battery terminal. So let me get that uh, ready and then we're going to get started. All right, so I've got the battery disconnected. I've got some pinch-off pliers here on my hose. I'm going to disconnect this radiator hose. Um, and then I'm going to disconnect that connector, that connector, and pop these little plastic clips uh, out of their holders so that I can get this harness out of the way. And we're going to pull this fan up and out of here. So let me get the connectors disconnected. Um, just a little tab right there, and let me get a little tool. There we go. Now, what I like to try to do is I like to try to retain these clips the best I can. Sometimes you don't have much of a choice, but I think I can. Yeah, there we go. If you can get in there and with some needle nose, pinch them, and then you can pop them loose. Now, Unfortunately, these others, I can't get back behind here. I might be able to on this one. I'm going to try to get these fan, the fan pulled up a little bit. Two 10 millimeter bolts, one there, one there. And then the fan just drops down into some little uh, recesses on the bottom. So there's nothing on the bottom to worry about. So let me get these bolts out. Okay, so I've got the uh, hose off. I got my bolts out, and I'm going to try to pull this fan up so I can get to the back of these. I don't want to have to just break these off. If, if you do, it's no big deal. You can zip tie through the hole then back around, which is what I'll do if I have to end up breaking them. Because these, I mean, you can actually stick a little deal in these zip ties and actually undo those, but I'm not going to take the time to do that. All right, so I've tried to get this fan out. It's not going to come with the battery tray installed, so I'm going to go ahead and pull this battery up, and I'm going to remove this battery tray. Just a matter of some bolts. 
So I've already got the battery disconnected here. And it looks like a plastic tray here. Usually there's one underneath that. Looks like there's a couple and there's some corrosion, so hopefully I don't have a problem. Alright, let me uh, get set up here. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is get this computer out of here. And there's a little tab right here you can just push using a screwdriver. And that computer pops right up out of there. Now, I also like to try to uh, save these little clips. Hopefully you can see that. Because it's nice to be able to snap all your stuff back in. Now, you can use like a socket. Let me get a little smaller one. And it will push these in. See how that pushes those in? Because this one I can't see. This one would have been easy enough to get with needle nose. This one I can't even see. So I'm just going to push the socket up. And now that one's disconnected. That way I can just snap everything back together like it's supposed to be. Now hopefully I don't have problems getting these rusted or these corroded bolts out, but hopefully that's just up on top. That was a 7mm socket that I used to depress those. Yep. wash that off with the uh, water and baking soda before I put it back in. Okay, so now hopefully those fans will come out of there a lot easier. Okay, so this is what I was wanting to show. So now I can get to the back of these clips for the harness. And for these, I am just going to use some needle nose. I'm going to pull this up, reach in here. Do that one. Do that one. And there's that one. Okay. Alright, there's a hose connected down there. Okay, there's a hose connected down in the bottom. I'll show that to you here in just a minute. I had to unclip it out of the uh, out of its little holder. See that hose right there? Transmission hose. It just clips right in there. So just, you don't even have to get underneath the car. You can just reach down there and pull it up. And it might be better to do that with it still bolted in. That way it's not moving around. So at this point, like I said, I'm going to try to do this without removing the rest of the radiator. But if I have to remove the radiator, there's just that transmission line. 
that transmission line, the lower radiator hose, and then you've got these little clips right here that the, once you unclip the top part of these holders, then we'll move out of the way and pull straight up out of here. Literally no big deal, but I'm going to try to do this by keeping the radiator in. I'm not going to run the risk of poking a hole in the radiator, so if it is tight, we are going to pull the radiator out. But now, it's, it's all about getting the alternator unbolted. So, we got the battery disconnected. There's a, uh, looks like a, uh, about a 12 millimeter maybe. So the battery post, the B positive battery, whoops, was 12 millimeter. I've already got the alternator connector disconnected from whenever I was troubleshooting it. All right, so I just want to get stuff out of my way. So we've got the alternator connector, the B positive disconnected. There's a connector right here. I want to disconnect just because it's connected to the harness. And that hopefully will allow me to kind of get the, all the harness out of my way. Actually, there's only two bolts for the alternator. All right, so now I want to detension the belt. And what you got to do there is loosen that nut right there off the tensioner. Let me see if I can get to this. 14 millimeter. All right. And you don't take it all the way, you just loosen it. Because now we go back up top. Should be able to see that little, what looks like a nut right there. That's the tensioner adjustment. And all I'm going to do, is I'm going to reach down there. I've got a swivel. I'm going to reach down there. I think, yeah, it's 14 millimeter. And I'm going to loosen that to relax the uh, tensioner. Now, Should be nice and loose. There you go. Good idea to look at your belt. If it's cracked, replace it. This one doesn't look like it's in too bad a shape. Uh, so now I'm going to go ahead and take this pulley off because. Just so you know, this goes on the back. This one goes on the front. Then your bolt. Okay, so you can see that the alternator bolt is now accessible. Now the bolt I'm going after is this top one. Not sure if going after the top or the bottom is easier. Whichever one you think is easier. You are kind of going to want a kind of a short wrench or ratchet. Um, 12 millimeter for this top alternator bolt. There it is. If I haven't mentioned it, it is 12 millimeter. Okay, so now 
believe the only thing we've got left is that bottom bolt. Alright. Hopefully you can see all that. Now the one thing you want to uh, watch for, don't lose these spacers off of the tensioner. Um, if, if you want you can take them off but make sure you know which way they go back. This is the bolt or the nut that we need to take off right here. And it is a 14. Yeah, 14. I'm using a shallow on just a swivel ratchet. Change positions here. I'm going to have to keep that light. Okay, yeah, and I just saw the alternator move. There's only two bolts holding this alternator on. I'm going to see if I can... Okay, yeah, it's loose. There's a little uh, hook on the back of this bolt that prevents the whole bolt from spinning. It's kind of like a stud with a hook on it. I think I already hooked it. If it pushes back, the bolt will spin. So try to keep forward tension on it while you undo the nut. There it is. Now that bolt will just freely push. Now let's see what it's going to take to get that out. Is that something? I, mean, I don't see it down here. I'm probably going to have to get underneath the car for this. Yeah, you can see the bolt. You can see the little hook right there. So I'm just going to reach up there with some needle nose pliers and uh, pull that out. Might be able to come up through the back side here. Whichever way I figure it out, I'll let you know. Alright guys, so I guess I didn't have the camera going. I've got the alternator laying down here in the lower part of the uh, bay here. I'm getting ready to see if I can easily walk it up this way to get it out of here. If it appears to be doing any damage to the radiator, I'm going to throw it down here in the bottom part of the engine compartment and I'll, I'm just going to finish pulling the radiator out. There's a bracket right here that I think is going to prevent me from doing that. Maybe not. We got it. We got it. Radiator still in. That little harness right here. Now this was already kind of boogered up. But you may want to unclip it. Get it out of the way. This was already broke. That little zip tie. But I can zip tie that back either way. And that will hold that harness out of the way. So now let's get the new alternator. Alright. Time to go back in. I'm going to go ahead and remove this nut. so good
it is roughly in place. I'm going to take our top alternator bolt and I'm going to get that installed so that it will pivot off of it. Okay. I think I've got the uh, first couple threads started. So now I'm going to snug it up just enough to where it'll straighten up the, uh, the alternator. You can see how the alternator is kind of crooked right now. What's going to happen? Where's that flange at? What's going to happen is whenever that bolt snugs, snugs up, that alternator is going to straighten. Definitely a two-handed job right here. And what the plan is, if it'll just pivot right there on that top bolt, then that's probably good. right there. Now I just got to reach down there and get that bottom bolt in and then we should be home and what I think I'm going to do where's that bottom bolt at? I want to find me another bolt roughly this size pull that alternator up from the front side which is the easy side uh, I'm going to stick a bolt in the front that way when I get back here to the back where this bolt goes I should be able to get that rear boss lined up. Let me show you. This is what I'm talking about. This is the rear boss. This is the front boss. I'm going to stick a temporary bolt right here in this one just to hold the alternator in place. Then I'm going to come in the back with this bolt, probably using needle nose pliers, and then I'm going to drive it all the way in. And then the hard part of this job will be done. Getting these bolts in so far has proven to be the toughest part, but I've, I've got the top one and I'm getting ready to go down and, like I say, put this one in. So I, I honestly don't know if there's going to be any way for you to see this. I'm going to find a bolt this size though for the front. I dug through my scrap bin, found a uh, Imperial bolt, but it's the, pretty close to the same diameter. So all I'm going to do is Stick it in the front of this. I'm going to have to have both hands, so I'm going to have to put the camera down. There's the bolt that's just temporarily stuck in there. It's now held the bottom of the alternator in place. Now I'm going to be able to come in from the back with that big bolt and get it into the rear boss or the inboard boss, and then I'm just going to push it on in, and it should push this bolt out. Okay, let me show you. This wasn't as tough as I thought it was going to be. You can literally see that bolt, the, the little hook right there. And what I've been able to do, unfortunately, I don't think I'm going to be able to. I'm coming in right behind the compressor. You can see my fingers. And I'm reaching up there and I'm pushing it in. And it's pushing that front bolt out. So, once that gets all the way through, I'll be able to get the nut put on it. So, let me get that done. Alright, got it pushed all the way through. Now, when you screw this one on, be be very easy. That way, you don't push the bolt back out. So, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to finish tightening this one up and the top one. Alternator will be bolted in. I'm going to come in and put the uh, spacer on, put the pulley on, get the belt put back on, and uh, go from there. Okay, the bottom bolt's tight. Now I'm going to come in with this ratchet. Okay. 
top bolts tight. So as far as the alternator it is now bolted in. Now let's see if I can figure out how I did all these connectors. There's a little hose right here that I had to move out of my way. Okay, there we go. So this one goes there. The alternator. Plug. Be positive. Remember, make sure your battery is disconnected when you're messing with this particular. Alternator's installed. We lost minimal amount out of the uh, radiator. I think before I go down below, I'm going to go ahead and uh, Connect the radiator hose, put the fans in and connect the radiator hose. Back out here so you can kind of see. There's supposed to be little bushings, little rubber isolators in here. And these are either wore out or someone may have had this taken out at some point in time and uh, didn't put them back, who knows. But that's why that radiator is flopping around. And I might see if I can find some a little piece of heater hose or something to cut and put in there. We're going to uh, go down below get the belt put on, get it tensioned, and then I start it up and see how, how we did. I'm gonna get these tools off the top of that. I try to be as thorough as possible. I, I know that some of my videos probably run a little longer than what you want, but you know, everybody's different. Um, some people might be having a hard time with a certain part of this job and you know they they want to see how I tackled that particular part so I try to show like anything of importance so uh, let me get this battery tray cleaned up and I'm gonna bolt it back in for those of you that skipped around in this video and you didn't see the battery tray coming out 
I'll show it going back in. So there's five bolts total, and uh, I've got them started. Now we're just going to tighten them up. Now we got the harness. Clip that side in there. This one here clips down in there. Then the uh, computer snaps in. Now we're ready for a battery. Connect positive first, then connect your negative. And the reason you want to connect your negative last is if, you're, if your negative was connected and you're tightening your positive up and your wrench comes over and touches something like the body or something, it would be difficult to do on this car because everything around here is plastic. But you have the, you run the likelihood of shorting your wrench out to the body. And if you've ever done that, it'll wake you up real quick. Now this battery did not have a hold down. So, nothing I can do about that really. All right, top side, we're done. Got a leftover nut that came off the old alternator. The only thing that we got to do now is get the belt put back on and then uh, tension it up from the top and then tighten the bolt up on the uh, actual pulley that it goes around. So let me kind of get that belt in position. Uh, I'll need the camera out of my way to get that done. And then I'm going to put the uh, pulley on. I'll get the bolt started and then I'll show you how to tension it up. Okay, I've got the belt on. It's loose. Got it all routed the way it needs to go. This nut is loose. You do not want that tight yet because we're going to go up and we're going to tension this up and, and actually it's going to push down to tension this belt. Once we get the proper tension, then we'll tighten this nut up and then we're done down here. Remember, that nut right down there, that one right there, is the tensioner. So we're going to tighten it. It's going to push that tensioner down, and it's going to put the proper amount of tension on it. You don't want to overdo it, so I'm going to snug it up a little bit, reach down there, see how much um, tension's on it, and then I'll tighten up the uh, nut on the uh, pulley. Now, unfortunately, the easiest way to get to that is using a swivel socket. Um, if you just got a swivel to put on a socket, you might be able to get on onto it. This is uh, 14 millimeter. Yep, 14 millimeter. And you've got to reach down here to get right on that. This is a quarter inch too, by the way. So I'm just going to tighten that. It's pushing that pulley down. I'm not going to put a whole lot. Let's get down here and check Probably just a little bit more. That's probably good right there. I'm just going to just a little tiny bit more. Yep, that's probably perfect right there. So now I'm just going to reach up here, tighten this nut. So yeah, I know a lot of people probably don't have swivel sockets, but it might be worth investing in. You can get a nice set. These are Titans, but I think you can get quarter inch swivel sockets at Harbor Freight. Even Amazon. I'll put links to some of this stuff that I've got that I think will be handy for you to have. That way, before you start the job, you can order it, including the alternator. Uh, this alternator I did order off Amazon. So uh, it was about $150 cheaper than buying it local. This is a new alternator, not rebuilt. So hopefully uh, it proves to be good. In fact, I guess we're, we're, we're ready to start it up. Try, give it a shot. Let me just give it one more of a once over. And I've heard that people say that what kills these alternators is this dipstick. 
not being pushed in all the way and oil being pushed out of there dripping down on the alternator I don't know if that's true or not this car's got two hundred and some thousand miles on it I mean I think it was probably about time for the alternator to go so I don't know doesn't look like there's a whole lot of oil around that area to me so other than just regular dirt and grit but it looks like we got everything back in connected see what happens and then I'll, all I got to do then is just throw the wheel back on and like I say just just so you know there's all the that's all the coolant that we got out of it that might be I don't know that might be a cup or less all right let me start it up all right guys so before I started it I figured let's hook the little charge uh, tester on it and let's see what the ripple is let's see if it if it's going to charge if, if you saw the last video where I troubleshot it the alternator was doing literally nothing at all we did get a ripple out of it which you generally do but it, it didn't charge whatsoever so I've, I've got this top Don uh, charger tester hooked up uh, we're going to hit enter to the charging test please start car millivolt ripple that's very good should have about 14.2 roughly hopefully I'm not going to rev it up fourteen point three nine so perfect charging normal And again, if you've got the closeout panel here, you'll need to put that on. I still have to put the uh, closeout panels here. They're literally just a bunch of little, little pins right here. I think I showed that on the video of troubleshooting, but uh, very easy to do. Anyway, we're done, uh, other than putting the tire on. Did not have to pull the radiator, so again, it, it, it wouldn't be that big of a deal if you did have to pull the radiator but uh, I try not to have to the, the manual the the Nissan uh, maintenance manual actually tells you to pull the radiator and I can understand why because it was a tight fit I can see a lot of people messing up the radiators if they're not careful a lot of times what I'll do is I'll take a piece of cardboard and I'll put right in front of the radiator uh, that way when you are wrestling around with anything uh, in front of the radiator you've got that extra little bit of cushion uh, in case you do smack into it or drag something across it so I didn't do it on this one but I would have if I felt I needed to anyway we're done 2006 Nissan Murano oh and by the way if anybody knows where you can get rebuild kits for alternators let me know because this is like a $250 alternator if it was working and I know back when I was in my twenties for sixteen dollars at Pet Boys you was able to uh, get a rebuild kit that included both front and rear bearings regulator diode trio brushes everything that you would need to rebuild an alternator now these parts houses they don't carry any of that stuff they just want to sell you a whole alternator I mean this alternator sounds good as far as bearing wise um, I'm sure uh, as long as the commutator is not just totally wasted you know a regulator a regulator will probably fix it but uh, you know if, if I can get a rebuild kit that includes brushes and everything I'd like to take this thing apart and turn it back into a working alternator if the rebuild kits are uh, cost effective the way they used to be anyway this car is back together got all this shroud on these are the little push pins I was telling you about half of them was missing on this car but I've got a little uh, assortment so I went ahead and put all new ones in 
anyway, this car is on down the road now. You guys take care.